What's up, everybody? Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. I didn't know you were a midget. <laughs> Today, I'm here with Kevin McCurley from New England Reptile Distributors. We're going to check out some mangrove snakes. Yes, hello, everyone. My name is Jason Ravioli, Primagera Pasta Rap Ravani. <laughs> and I'm going to show you a couple snakes. The vertebrae of that tail. Oh, medic! Oh, ooh! <laughs> this is a mangrove snake. This is a beautiful and rather rare mangrove snake. This is uh, very much a locality species specific hi baby no being angry at daddy so this is boega dendrophila divergent so this is just a divergence this is from uh palu island but i don't know if you can see how blue that is yeah what a pretty snake hi baby so this is a morph you're specifically working with this is well it's its own it's its own you know its own species its own, yes its own thing but it's uh and these are rear fanged venomous correct yeah this is rear fanged venomous so they'd have to they'd have to bite and chew on you yeah they bite it. so it's it's a non-pressurized venom delivery system so the venom is you know designed to uh succumb you know if they're eating frogs or or you know whatever they're eating uh but i've already you know worked with her i've had her since she's a little baby so generally she's uh she's reasonable you just got to know you know what triggers not to do and but she's definitely an intelligent thinking animal definitely reactive because i'll pull out a couple different mangroves and mangrove snakes are uh very um they get upset very easily and they often react strongly sometimes to cameras and stuff so i do a lot of supportive type stuff so i'm you know, I want her to feel very relaxed and comfortable. Her tongue flicks right now are really good. She's uh, just uh, enjoying herself. She's doing fantastic. Yeah. So. And you, you bred a couple of these, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got some babies. Clutches on the eggs. Yeah, I got some babies. Nice. Very much. A mangrove snakes are just a wonderful uh, grouping of snakes. That uh, they're you know largely arboreal, so you can give them these arboreal uh, cages, and they'll. They'll do all sorts of the cool stuff using the perches. And they're very cryptic though, they love to hide. And they're also big time nocturnal. So right now we're outside of her comfort. She's doing a lot of tail wiggling. So they'll sometimes just do that because it's indicative of like, uh, I'm kind of like wanting to hide and don't feel so comfortable. So uh, actually I can go over a little bit about that, the, just a simple thing. Yeah. Uh, right here we give her a moist retreat, like a, like a nest chamber type stuff. So there's uh, moist sphagnum moss in there. And uh, these guys do like high humidity. Uh, they, uh, they'll go in here sometimes, uh, other times, you know, they're, they're out. I've had these in arboreal setups too. The thing that um, I didn't like about the arboreal setup is if I am interacting with these animals and I want to socialize them, extracting her, them, excuse me, from an arboreal situation sometimes can be uh, problematic and actually can kind of be uh, contrary to what I want to do, you know, as far as touching them, getting to, you know, then the animals realize you're not going to hurt them. So something like this, I can basically, I have much better access to the animal so she gets more socialized and then we get an animal with a lot less stress. I'll bring on another one. Yeah, with pretty snake. This is a young divergence. So you can see her. So what she's doing is she's kind of flattening her head and doing this press down, not tongue flicking. So she's basically just, uh, she's really uh, feeling threatened and taken aback. So she's not doing a lot of thinking. She just wants to hide, kind of look a little bit menacing. So. And she's a baby to the one that you just showed? Um, or, or per se, not time. necessary to that one, but one of mine, I have a, a little group of these guys. So these guys do have uh, gripping tails, you know, prehensile type tail. So you just want to make sure when you are taking them off of something, you don't 
damage the vertebrae of that tail. Oh, medic! Ow! Oh, ooh! Oh my god! No. <laughs> That's so funny. It's so cute. So that is literally, it is like such a little defensive. I actually picked this one just because this one's a little little brat and likes to flatten its head out and stuff. She's doing really nice. She's just, What a pretty snake. There the you go. So, on see, that so we went right into thinking mode. After she drew first blood, like Rambo, uh, she's now she's like, oh, okay, I guess I'm going to think. Isn't that cool? Commentate? Commentate. Whatever. Commentate? Well, Commentate. Commentate? Commentary. I think we have to ring in Sylvester Tinkleball because your, your word and your, your dialect is way too sophisticated. I'm just a snake breeder. <laughs> so, so, Mr. Snake Breeder. I'm going to sit here and commentate. This is uh, Melanota. And this Melanota is doing its first shed. You can see right here this shed is constraining. You must keep it in a semi-human environment with good ventilation and water to achieve maximum potential for this little fella to shed. Look at that. So oh, that is, and it's exquisite. Do you know, straight Jason, out of the egg? Mr. Ragu Ribadi Progetta, this snake took over a hundred days. Do you know what that's like? A hundred lonely days hiding in your home from COVID. It took me just to hatch this amazing little fella. And look at that. I think it's talking to you says, you're not man enough to keep something like me. Oh, you hear that? <laughs> wow, that was really amazing. Your wife won't let you be a man and have something like me. Woo, did you hear that too? <laughs> oh my goodness. But anyways, this wonderful little snake is now doing its first shed. So pretty much right after it sheds, we're going to go right for the immediate feed. And uh, Bellinota, so Boega, Dendrophila, Bellinota, which is one of the larger, uh, like the Solowezi, Subatrid type bag growth snakes. These guys grow pretty big. And I don't know why I'm talking like that. <laughs> I'm going to talk in Snarfles. We've got to bring Snarfles You've got to bring Snarfles at some mm -hmm. point. So this snake, uh, Melanotas, eat well. They make really good uh, captives where they, uh, their husbandry is um, easy enough to achieve or you get an animal that's going to feed. Uh, they. And what about starting them off as babies once this, they're out of the egg? They this one's on readily. pinkies, yeah. So th these guys, uh, so let me show you. So this guy, which is so, so friggin' cute. And you know what's amazing about this one? That is a head albino. Oh, T negative albino. T negative albino. You remember oh, we'll have to take Mr. Crowley? So here I have some eggs. So these guys go a long, long time. This one egg, we might be losing that, but we're going to, we're going to see. Um, so it's probably, we're almost 110 days in, I think on these. Wow. And still we don't have a, a slit. So it, it does take something to, to breed these guys. I'm obviously, I've um, been learning some. Yes. What's the temperature on the eggs? Is that, you think that I'm doing this difference? at room temperature, yeah. So this is like 82, 84. I've, I've incubated them up to 86 degrees. Uh, and uh, I think you just kind of like put it in a bin and then you just kind of make sure you're ma managing it and you can do okay. Set it but, and forget it? Uh, set it and forget it. But boy, you don't forget these because you really want to see these things hatch. So I'm going to show you another one. This one has shed, shed and fed. Now look at the size of my finger. Look at that. Now you can see, no scenting. You see that little lump right there? Oh yeah, right, what a buddy? beautiful snake. It's so tiny. Mm-hmm. Let's get you back here. So they're almost like the rare fang of boreal corn snakes. Um, maybe something like that. And, uh, if you raise them up and you, you socialize them and stuff, uh, you can, you can do uh, pretty well. I also have Boyega Dunderfila Dunderfila, which is the nominant race. I, I, I found with them, the babies are going to be more difficult as far as getting them to feed. I think they naturally want to eat things like, uh, lizards and frogs and maybe birds. And I really like the Melanota and the Divergence because, uh, from, for myself, I've been easier to get them on rodents. Uh, 
the divergence are a trick to hatch, so I will tell you that. Something like this, this is originally, so she's got a shed. She's going, she's actually just getting ready to shed. So she's, you can see her reacting to your camera, see right there? Wow. So this is originally a wild caught animal and uh, just trying to win it over and socialize it. So she's kind of freaked out. Um, so I'm basically doing all the triggers to make her nervous. But look how glorious this is. So this is Melanota. So she, is she a reduced pattern? Cause so, so some of them, they, they're all different levels. I have one that's going to be coming to me that's like crazy looking, which what definitely looks like some kind of crazy morph of Melanota. But yes, this is super reduced. Yeah, that's incredible because most of them, they have the bands, the yellow bands. We'll, we'll, we'll bring some of that out there. So that's more uh, typical of uh, Dendrophila, Dendrophila, where they got, you know, the mini banded. Now, I know these guys kind of have a bad reputation for being difficult to keep. And do you think a lot of that's because they're wild caught and kind of So, low, yeah, so they come quality. in loaded with parasites. Getting captive born animals is a completely different um, animal. And uh, with these guys, it just takes time. So you have to be really uh, persistent with uh, your worming uh, protocol and your methods because they will have all sorts of different, uh, just, you know, basically strong giles, uh, protozoa, amoeba. They'll have um, a lot of uh, ascarids, roundworms type stuff. But then they'll also have flukes, uh, liver flukes, they'll have tapeworms, so trematodes, cestodes. And those guys can be really hard to rid the animal. So, and the trick is to do it over a period of time. So when you are worming a snake, what you're doing is you're, you're poisoning the carrier of the parasites. So you're poisoning it enough to kill and interrupt the, uh, the life cycle of those parasites, but not make this animal, you know, uh, suffer. And uh, when you first start killing off your parasites, it can sometimes be a, a really tough thing on an animal like this, depending if it's a high parasite load. Something that eats frogs and lizards can have incredibly high parasite loads. So uh, when you're first killing them, the, the decaying and dying material of the parasites can uh, basically uh, load these guys down with uh, the decaying uh, matter. Yeah. And uh, it can give them a blood infection. They can uh, really almost poison them as you're trying to do yeah you just want to take it take it slow so i'm basically i go through a worming regime every uh seven to ten days on these and i might worm them for a couple months very cool what else you got Let's yeah see. i got more so this one kind of grumpy see that tongue hanging out uh inconsistent tongue flicking this is an animal that's like on point right now so she's kind of freaked out. So I'll do this for a second. Enjoy her. So this is Dendrophila dendrophila. This is a uh, smaller growing than the Melanota and uh, maybe more commonly seen. These can also be uh, a bit of a struggle as far as feeding. And I uh, definitely find out the babies are harder for me to manage. So this is a different species? Well, this is, species? So this is Boega dendrophila dendrophila. So the other one we were just looking at, Boega dendrophila melanota, uh, Boega dendrophila divergence. Okay, so these are the ones that I'm more used to seeing them yes. with, the full, with the full black stripes or the full yellow banding. Yeah, they're glorious. I mean, banding. just... And I have uh, T positives of this. Yeah, she's, uh, she's not happy right now, huh? Yeah, At least can... curious. Heads all flat. Wow, yeah. what a pretty snake. And then what would you, where would you classify these as in terms of experience level? You, I think you really, to be successful with them, you, you want to be mid-level or, or up. You just have to be good about your husbandry. Basically giving them things like a hide box with a moist substrate. So if they want to get more humid, they can go to do that. Make sure you're good about keeping the water clean. Uh, in some cases, you know, they'll go into like these arboreal cages that I was talking about. But if you do want to hold it and you know, basically socialize it, these arboreal cages will often not give you what you need uh, as far as uh, being able to get the animal in, in and out of the cage. So, 
And maybe we'll put her back yeah, and let right. her come out. Look at that belly. My gorgeous. So, Kevin, so what do we have here? Is this the albino, what is it called, the melanoma? Yeah, yep. Yeah. So, yeah. So, oh, actually, Boega. Dendrophila melanota. Wow. And so how, how rare is this animal? This is it. This is the one and only one. There are T negative dendrophila, dendrophila that are in you know very uh, short supply, but that's not the one that I want. I want the melanota. This is this is the beast. I'm very surprised that the temperaments on all these are pretty. Yeah, good. we've made I've made really good friends with him. You see me, how I you know do all my yeah. socialization and I uh I will clearly extend that to things like uh, my mangrove snakes. They thought he was crazy over there when uh, they were like, don't get bit because you know, he just wants to bite all the time. And I got this guy, just mm -hmm. wonderful. I don't know if you're getting how ridiculously yellow that is and just the, the contrast. Oh yeah, no, it's picking it up. What a gorgeous snake. So this, so is, this is one special animal then? Oh, yes. We, we call him Mr. Crowley. This is uh, really wonderful. You can sometimes. Yeah, what a pretty snake. He's a really good snake too. He's really come around. He's got a brain. And where did he come from? You know, what part of the world did this guy? <sighs> this guy came um, Sumatra. Sumatra. It's amazing because he, he was an older animal, correct? When you got him in. Yeah, it's actually supposed to be a girl. And I, I was looking at the. It was, you know, it's expensive, too expensive. Uh, at first, I was thinking, but I, I love mangrove snakes so much. I'm like, I, I think I have to get the snake no matter what. And uh, they were saying it was a female and I kept on looking at it from the couple pictures and I was like, I think, looking at the body style and everything, I'm like, I think this is a boy. And thank goodness it's a boy. And he's produced a couple clutches for you so far? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're just, just in the very beginning aspects of breeding. Beautiful. Yeah, I'll bring you out a um, Azantic Dendrophila Dendrophila next. He used to like go crazy at the camera. He's learned. Okay, so this is uh, basically Dendrophila Dendrophila. So this is the Azantic wild version. And uh, so it's not the black and yellow, so we basically are lacking all of our yellows. So it's a genetic condition that's uh, inheritable and it's recessive. So uh, one thing I do is just when you are handling snakes like this, they are rear fanged. So they have enlarged rear teeth uh, and they have venom. Uh, I've never been envenomated by a mangrove. But when I do handle snakes, I try to be a little bit uh, methodical when I'm moving. I don't want to be too erratic. I also handle the animal like it's not going to bite me, which basically means I'm allowing it to press its face against my hand. I'm doing this kind of stuff. I just don't want, if I start limiting how I'm behaving with that, I don't really flow, if anybody kind of understands that. You really just want to be really smooth and methodical with an animal like that because you are you know, working on trying to develop a relationship because you know, when they're captives, we want to keep the stress down as much as possible. This animal, I think, is shedding. So that's amazing, because this is just like what we just looked at, the yellow, but no yellow. It's right. all, Yes. it's just like take all the saturation out. Yeah, and like I said, I have T-positive too of this. I'll bring out for the last snakes, I know your battery's getting low, I'll bring out a big melanota. Wow, gorgeous. Here she comes. <laughs> wow. All right, Kevin, so what do we have here? This is Kirtleen. This is a giant, giant female melanota. So she's going into, uh, this is actually our egg-laying shed, should be. 
Wow, she is big. She's the camera does not picking up how big that. that yeah, yeah. Is. I have the same problem with her, but she is. She's so diesel. She loves to eat the frosted mice and rat pups. Beautiful snake. Isn't it's, that great? So is, is this about as big as they get? This is a big. This is a big female. Now, if a male, these guys are dimorphic, so the male's even going to get bigger. Really? So okay. you're pretty much. You could talk like a ten foot, nine to ten foot of one of these as an extreme great example. This is why I'm loving this. So if we have this as albino, this is, you know, as, as you saw, Mr. Crowley, and uh, this is one of his girlfriends. So uh -huh. she should be carrying that lineage. And it's a very, very exciting project for, for me. Uh, I'm so thrilled that I was uh, fortunate enough to get this project. She's a doll. I mean, you know, doll by my standards, uh, she certainly, I've seen her very defensive to certain people. These animals know you, and as you know how I handle things, and things just don't appear to be whatever. She's really good for me, uh, but at nighttime, she does come alive. Wow. Isn't that glorious? Beautiful snake. All right, guys, I hope you all liked the video and appreciated what Kevin was showing off, some of his new projects. If you don't already, make sure to please like, subscribe this channel, and go to Kevin's channel. Like, subscribe, click on that link, get those notifications, and let's keep it moving. Until next week, guys, thank you.